Hi everyone, it's Kathleen here from 15th Century Spinning. I know it's been a while since I've done a video or done a blog update. As always, I have been busy. I know I always say that, but it is always true. Fortunately, in the past few weeks, I have found some time to do some fun things, which most recently has been dyeing. So I have done a little bit of dyeing in the past. For those of you that remember my yellow Jamora, I dyed that with fiber reactive dyes. It was a linen fabric in a very pale shell pink was the name of the color when I brought it. And I brought that linen because it was really, really cheap and I didn't have as much money back then. I was a student. So I bought it and I bought what was called fiber reactive dyes from this lady at the markets and I dyed it in my bathtub and it came out really, really nice and really, really even. I've done a small amount of other dyeing with those same dyes. I um, have dyed some blue, I've dyed some orange and mainly it has just been fabric for making my medieval or renaissance clothing. But I've always been interested in natural dyeing and specifically the dyes they used in the 15th century, but not just. So I ordered myself some dye and Spotlight had a sale on yarn and I was able to pick up, um, essentially it's a 50 grams of pure wool in a 8 ply or DK weight for $2 a ball which for me is a pretty good price, um, especially when I'm just going to be practicing and don't necessarily want to waste something that might be nice or more expensive. It just sort of gives me the option just to experiment and if it doesn't turn out, oh well. So the first dye I tried was cochineal. This is a insect. It's like a, a little bug that grows on cactus and it grows in various parts throughout the world. And I'm told depending on where it's grown and maybe where it's been living, it does come at different colors. And also pH changes the color. So it might be more blue or more orange depending on the pH, which means you can get a range of tones from purples through reds through oranges. Now, for my first natural dyeing, I didn't actually buy the bug, mainly because the place I ordered my natural dyes from didn't have any of the bug in stock. They just had a already reduced extract from the bug. So they had taken the bug and squished it and soaked it and turned it into a powder, etc. The color I got was pretty red. So this is a, a really, really bright red. Now this is cochineal. It's been mordered in, in alum. And in the cochineal dye bath, I added some iron, um, which I was hoping to get more of a, a blue tone out of. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's quite red. If I compare it to the one that didn't have the iron in, you can see it is, it is bluer. So this one here is more of an orangey um, red. Um, it's still a very, a very true red but this one is a deeper red. And so I tried some different things, um, different strength dye baths. This pretty pink color here, this is a cochineal and it is the third dye bath. So what I actually did is I made up a two strong dye bath. I put in one skein, I left it a while, I put in another, left it a while and put in another. Um, that's just how I chose to do it. Um, so this one is the cochineal and iron third dye bath and it is a beautiful little candy pink. Um, and the the interesting thing is I went round to my sister's house and she had her daughter's Jamora lying on her chair. She was in the middle of mending it. Um, and I looked at this and I looked at the linen Jamora exactly the same color and I took a photo and I joked hey now you don't have to document the color of your Jamora. Um, so the cochineal I use um, instead of Kermes that is the you know expensive red dye of the middle ages 
A lot of dyers I see use cochineal um, as a replacement. Um, it's not exactly the same. They're both bugs, so they're both little bugs that get squished down. I'm told they are related to each other, but not exactly the same. So I guess, yes, the colours are different, and that's just something to be aware of. And if I just hold these up, you can see some of the colour variations I got. The next thing I was really excited to try was Matter. I love the colour that Matter gives. I do have a dress dyed with Matter, not by me, and I have a lot of dresses I like to think look like they were dyed with Matter. Um, I have two dresses actually um, that are a nice steep um, orangey burnt brick sort of colour. Um, so it is a colour I really like. Um, and a colour I do like to use in my 15th century clothing. So with the matter, um, it comes as a root and I should probably have mentioned previous to actually dyeing my yarn, I did mordant it. I mordant it in alum, so I weighed out 15% of my fibre and I um, you know, put it in a, a pot and simmered it for an hour at about 85 degrees and then you take it out and you rinse it and you hang it out to dry. And it was after I'd done the cochineal and when I was starting to break up my matter roots that my husband looked at the amount of yarn I had brought and he looked at the amount of yarn, amount of dye I had yet to use and he sort of said, well, you've brought 10 skeins of yarn, you've, you know, used more than half of that. And after work one day, when he'd finished work and I hadn't finished work, he went to Spotlight and he brought me some more yarn. And then the next day he went back and brought some more while it was still on sale. And so he was there and I'm quite proud of him. He was looking at the labels to try and match up the, the dye lots. Now it doesn't really matter if the dye lots match. Um, obviously it would give me a very consistent view. Um, but I really love that he actually knew to check the dye lots and I was very impressed. Um, and I think the lady who went to Spotlight was quite impressed as well. She went and got him some of the pre-packaged yarn so he didn't have to dig through the bin. So now I was armed with a lot more yarn. I'm not sure how many balls of yarn he brought but he brought quite a few so I don't think I am going to run out anytime soon. So after mordeting my yarn I had my matter and it was in pieces of root that I did chop up smaller. Now my instruction said to soak your matter overnight, discard the first lot of water that came from it and then use that matter for the dyeing and I don't know why it said to discard the first lot of water, I'm sure there's a reason. But what I did is I chopped up my matter roots, I soaked my matter overnight, and then I strained off the water and I dyed with that first, um, that first water while my matter roots simmered in another pot for the second extraction. So with matter, you have to make sure the temperature doesn't get too hot no hotter than 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. And this is the yarn I dyed with the first soak. So this, as you can see, it's a relatively strong colour. It's sort of like a, a brown toned orange or an orange toned brown. It is quite pretty. So this was the first soak of the matter and the first dye bath. So I put that in, I simmered it for I think about 45 minutes, took it out, washed it, hung it out and then I put this into the pot and it's a really sort of um, pinky mushroomy type brown, it is quite pretty as well. So this is the first soak of matter for the second dye bath and those are the pretty colours I got. Meanwhile I still have the other matter simmering and I strained off the matter root and I used that to dye my next two skeins. And these are the colours I got from the second soak. As you can see, this is the one from the first dye bath from the second soak. And it is much brighter in colour than the one from the first dye bath. Which 
sort of seems a bit strange. This one, when I first soaked the matter, I put hot water in, um, as in hot tap water, which our tap water is about 60 degrees Celsius, and then it just sort of cooled. This one did get simmered for about an hour, so maybe that extracted more dye. Maybe the first extraction just doesn't give us bright colours. But this is a really pretty colour. I really, really, really love this colour. Um, so that's really beautiful. And this is the second soak of the matter and the second dye bath from that soak. As you can see, it is lighter. It's, um, again, a brownie orange sort of colour. It's different from the, the first soak. Um, I like it not as much as the fully saturated colour. Then, after the second soak, second dye bath, the colour was, as you can see, quite pale. And I thought, well, a third dye bath, I don't know what I'm going to get out of it. So I took the matter roots. Um, I should probably have mentioned if I didn't. I strained off the matter roots um, from the second dye bath and dyed in just the liquid. But this time I added the matter roots back in and I simmered it all together and I put my yarn in there. So I put two more skeins. Oh, and actually I've told you wrong. It was actually this one that was the um, second soak, second dye bath. So just to compare. First soak of the, um, sorry, second soak, first dye bath, second soak, second dye bath. And we can compare those. So this is a bit pinkier. Um, that's actually quite pretty. But these were the two skeins I put in the third soak with the matter root and everything. Um, I put them in roughly at the same time. I put in one and then I got the other and put that in. Um, one of them is slightly lighter than the others. Um, but this this definitely is a orangey brown colour. Um, so there was still obviously a lot of colour left in that matter. The amount of matter I used was a bit over 50 grams. My instructions said to use 100% weight of fibre. So 50 grams of fibre would be 50 grams of matter. These are each 50 grams and this is how much I got. So I really like the, the matter colour and I would definitely love me a dress out of this I think it's really pretty this one here and again I've told you wrong um, I didn't put two skeins in the third soak of matter I actually put three and this is one of them now you're wondering why it is so very bright red it looks more like the cochineal well I over dyed the matter with the cochineal um, and I got this beautiful red out of it um, I'm yeah really surprised how bright these reds turned out. They are very, very red and lovely.